Let's look at two examples from Intro Physics 2. These are covered in the first year of physics sequence, the one year, and we're going to first of all consider a constant electric field. So let's do that here. And your force is given by Q times the electric field. The electric field here points upward. Think of this as a negative charge plate and a positive charge plate down here. So the positive charges want to go upward. We're going to send in here a particle that has mass m and q which is positive so that it will drift upward. We're going to come in here to the right with initial velocity v naught and this is our origin x y equals zero zero right there. So we have Newton's law f equals m a for the x direction it has a zero force since there's no electric field in the x direction. We have electric field in the y direction, so the test charge Q times E is equal to the mass times the acceleration upward. So these are equations of motion and our initial V at time t equals zero when it's right there at the origin is V naught in the x direction. So V sub x equals V zero all the time because if you integrate this, you get that the velocity in the x direction is a constant. And since it starts off at V naught, it stays that constant all the way throughout. For the y equation, when we integrate this, we get Q big E over M times T plus a constant, but that constant is zero since there's no initial velocity in the y direction. Then we integrate again to get our trajectory and if we integrate this we get x naught which is an overall constant plus v naught t. So just think of integrating this, this constant v naught, you get v naught t plus a constant and the constant is x naught because when t is zero that's when you find your initial position x naught right there at the origin, we'll take it to be zero and make it even simpler and it'll go away. So here when we do the case with the y, we integrate this, we get the t squared over 2 plus y naught and since y naught once again is at the origin, that goes away. So there is the equation for the x and the y and that gives you the parabola characteristic of constant fields and you did something with the trajectory in the gravitational field where you go falling down instead of going up and you had similar parametric equations. Now let's go on to the constant magnetic field one and in that case we see that we deal with the second piece of the Lorentz force equation the V cross B and here we see that the velocity being perpendicular to the magnetic field which goes into the page gives you the maximum effects. That's the example I chose to cover. So V vector cross B vector is simply VB since you have a 90 degree uh, between the vector and the magnetic field. So if you cross V with the vector that goes into the page, you proceed toward the center. And since you proceed toward the center, you have a centrip centripetal force and the centripetal force means mv squared over r. That's your acceleration, the centripetal acceleration v squared over r. And the equation is m v squared over r is qvb. You can knock out here a v by dividing both sides by v and you get this nice equation. And remember your angular velocity is your tangential velocity here divided by r, the radius of your circle. And when you do that, you can get the equation here that the V over R, your omega, is QB over M. And that's the lumbar frequency. If you look here at this nice little bubble chamber photograph in CERN, you can see that they have a magnetic field here that's into the page or out of the page. And then particles are coming in along, let's say, the plane here. And when you have these circular paths, that means there's charged particles. And the positive charges will you know, curve one way and negative will curve the other way. And this is your classic bubble chamber photograph. And millions of such interactions were studied during the 60s and 70s at CERN and other places.